Last time you guys were here, we worked on a graphic organizer. It looked like this. If you don't have this already because you were absent, go ahead and grab it from the substitute. She has some extra copies at the front of the room for you to be able to use. Now, if you don't have any of these written down because you weren't here last time, you can get this um, video linked for you on Canvas. I don't know if it'll work very well and play very well, but um, or you could also just get it from somebody in class. Maybe they'll let you borrow their notes. I don't know. Well, we're going to go ahead and take some notes today. And we're going to continue on with our organ systems that we gathered last time. Now, remember that all organisms are made up of cells. And more complex organisms have multiple cells that make up tissues. And multiple tissues can combine together, working together for a specific job will make an organ and multiple organs working together to perform a specific function will make up an organ system. Now all of those in complex animals or plants will be able to make up an organism. Now I'm going to go over the last or the first two organ systems that we actually covered in class together. So you might want to actually fast forward to the, the TED Ed video here in the presentation. Um, those of you who need to take the notes because you're at home or on Canvas, go ahead and keep watching the video. Don't fast forward it and take all the notes that you need to take for this section of the video. All right, so we're going to go over 11 body systems. Uh, we're going to start that today here. And the first one is the nervous system. Now, the nervous system's purpose is to control the body and the communication through the body. It actually does that using electrical signals throughout the body. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Now here we kind of have an example of what it looks like. It looks a little bit like veins, but it starts with the brain and it's actually not veins. It's these connections of um, nerves that run from the brain down from the spinal cord. Now if you see here, this is like a, our vertebrae. We're looking at the actual front of someone's chin there at the top and then down there, that's the spine we see. And we have all these nerves that come out of our body. They look like almost like electrical equipment coming out. And what they do is they kind of help sense our environment. So this Im information from, that we get from the nerves tells us things like um, things in our surroundings are sharp or that felt uncomfortable or this, this is a lot of pressure, a little bit of pressure. We even have nerves wrapped around the ends of hairs to tell us that a breeze is blowing through. All right, so now go ahead and go back to your graphic organizer and we're going to write some of this down, the stuff that we need to remember and that we need to know. So the first thing you're going to do is we are going to label this. We are going to label this the nervous system. So N-E-R-V-O-U-S system. Now the bottom of your graphic organizer, we're going to write down the word function. F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Now the function of the nervous system is to control it controls the body and sends signals to and from the brain. So its function is to control the body and send signals to and from the brain. All right, so now we're going to write down the organs. So write down the word organ. So the organs, we're only going to write down major organs for these body systems. We're not going to write down every organ that we have in each of these body systems. But the major ones we're going to write down here is the brain and nerves. So the brain, oh sorry, the spinal cord and nerves. All right, let's go ahead and sketch that in. Get, grab whatever color you want to do. Um, I'm going to grab, I don't know, 
black. We're going black. We're going to start black with my brain. I'm drawing myself in a brain. That's the most important part here of our whole system. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw in the spinal cord. And now maybe I'm going to grab a yellow color or orange color for no particular reason. But I'm going to go ahead and draw it in here. Now all of our nerves kind of stem outward from this spinal cord. So we've got all this series of cords running through our body and there's a lot of nerves that run through our body. Every single section, square inch of your body has nerves running through it to be able to sense our surroundings and keep us safe. So go ahead and sketch yourself in a series of nerves throughout your entire body. Now, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. We're not drawing exact replicas here. We're just going to get the general idea so that when we study it, it gives us a visual to look at while we study. So when you study your notes, when you're looking back at them, sometimes it helps to add color or add interesting pictures. It just makes it a little bit more interesting to actually look through your notes and study your notes. And it helps when you're on the test. You're like, oh, what was that thing that had that picture next to it? It really kind of helps to look at those kind of things. All right, so the next system is our respiratory system. The purpose of that is to take in oxygen and get rid of waste product like carbon dioxide. When you're breathing, it's actually called respiring. Kind of sounds like you're sweating, but you're not. You're breathing. You're breathing air in and out. So a respire or respiratory system is responsible for bringing in oxygen into the body and then letting out the waste product of oxygen out of your body. So things that are going to be involved in that is going to be like your mouth, which isn't actually a real organ. Um, I mean, it's real stuff, but it's not an organ in itself. It's more of an area of your body. Um, but for this, we're actually going to call it a mouth. It's actually made up of things like the pharynx and the larynx. And we've got all these different parts of breathing, the nasal cavity. But we're going to just talk about the nose and the mouth as something very general is where we're going to breathe in or intake air. We're going to breathe it down through the trachea. And the trachea is going to bring that to the lungs. Now the lungs, a lot of people think the lungs is being like a big balloon or a sack of air or a big pocket in your body, but it's actually made up of many different little sacks and many of these different uh, bronchii here leading off to small cells that are going to be doing the absorption of um, oxygen. Now this actually maximizes our volume that we can actually take in oxygen with. Oh, hold on a second. I meant to go back. Ugh, let me zoom in here. All right, so we're going to zoom in. Look at the, what these pockets look like. Well, basically all the air goes into these tiny little pockets. Now having all these little pockets maximizes the volume of which we can absorb or the area, the space where we can absorb this oxygen. So you'll see here, in this little uh, able, able, sorry, I can't speak right now. This little air sac, I'm not going to try to say it right now. We breathe in the oxygen through here. The air gets absorbed by the cells in these little sacs. And then it goes straight to the bloodstream. You can see the veins and arteries that are attached to this. And oxygen will come in and go into the veins, reoxygenate it. It will go in through the heart and be pumped through the body. It will give off, it will turn into the arteries, go move into the arteries. It will give off its oxygen. And while it goes through giving oxygen to all the cells, it'll pick up waste products like water vapor and carbon dioxide that the cells are giving off. And it will take those off, bring them back to the lungs, and then exit it back out of the lungs through these little sacs as well. So it just goes right back out and here just kind of shows the oxygen CO2 exchange that happens with the blood. So this is the respiratory system. 
Now we're going to watch this short video on, on kind of telling us how those, uh, the lungs actually work. It's kind of an interesting video. But, oh, sorry. Hold on a second. We need to actually write some of this stuff down. I forgot about it. We'll watch the video in a second. So, here the respiratory system, R E S P I R A T O R Y, respiratory system. Here I'm going to start with the nose, and I'm just going to draw a regular sized nose. It's not big or anything, it's just a normal sized nose to breathe in all the oxygen that I need and of course a normal sized mouth here and that's completely normal. Doesn't look weird at all. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw myself uh, the trachea. Now technically we have the larynx and the pharynx, but we're just going to worry about the trachea because the trachea goes directly from um, the, it's in the throat there and it's going to lead directly to the lungs. It's going to bring oxygen down to the lungs. Now you can actually feel the trachea in your throat. Um, if you, you've been back and almost feel this pipe down your throat there, it's kind of a bumpy pipe all the way down. That actually is your windpipe or your trachea. That's bringing air to your lungs and air out of your lungs. Now I'm going to go ahead and add color to this because color makes everything better. And now let's go ahead and write down our function. Our function. Our function for the respiratory system. The function for our respiratory system is to take in oxygen, O-X-Y-G-E-N, and then it's going to release water vapor and carbon dioxide, our two waste products from respiration. So we're going to take in oxygen, and then when we exhale, we're going to release water vapor and carbon dioxide. Now this process is called respiration. All right, so next our organs. Our organs for this system that we're going to write down here are our lungs, our trachea, T-R-A-C-H-E-A, -E trachea. The CH makes the K sound for who knows what reason. It's English. It's because we just feel like it having a different sound. So we'll make it a different sound. So trachea. And then we're going to put here the mouth. Again, not a real organ, just an area. But uh, And then we're going to say nose. So the mouth and nose. That's how we're going to intake our, our air. Many of us have hundreds of things on our minds at any moment, often struggling to keep track of everything we need to do. But fortunately, there's one important thing we don't have to worry about remembering, breathing. When you breathe, you transport oxygen to the body's cells to keep them working and clear your system of the carbon dioxide that this work generates. Breathing, in other words, keeps the body alive. So how do we accomplish this crucial and complex task without even thinking about it? The answer lies in our body's respiratory system. Like any machinery, it consists of specialized components and requires a trigger to start functioning. Here, the components are the structures and tissues making up the lungs, as well as the various other respiratory organs connected to them. And to get this machine moving, we need the autonomic nervous system, our brain's unconscious control center for the vital functions. As the body prepares to take in oxygen-rich air, this system sends a signal to the muscles around your lungs, flattening the diaphragm and contracting the intercostal muscles between your ribs to create more space for the lungs to expand. Air then whooshes into your nose and mouth, through your trachea, and into the bronchi that split at the trachea's base, with one entering each lung. Like tree branches, these small tubes divide into thousands of tinier passages, called bronchioles. It's tempting to think of the lungs as huge balloons, but instead of being hollow, they're actually spongy inside, with the bronchioles running throughout the parenchyma tissue. At the end of each bronchiole is a little air sac called an alveolus, wrapped in capillaries full of red blood cells containing special proteins called hemoglobin. The air you've breathed in fills these sacs, causing the lungs to inflate. Here is where the vital exchange occurs. 
At this point, the capillaries are packed with carbon dioxide, and the air sacs are full of oxygen. But due to the basic process of diffusion, the molecules of each gas want to move to a place where there is a lower concentration of their kind. So as oxygen crosses over to the capillaries, the hemoglobin grabs it up, while the carbon dioxide is unloaded into the lungs. The oxygen-rich hemoglobin is then transported throughout the body via the bloodstream. But what do our lungs do with all that carbon dioxide? Exhale it, of course. The autonomic nervous system kicks in again, causing the diaphragm to ball up and the intercostal muscles to relax, making the chest cavity smaller and forcing the lungs to compress. The carbon dioxide-rich air is expelled, and the cycle begins again. So that's how these spongy organs keep our bodies efficiently supplied with air. Lungs inhale and exhale between 15 and 25 times a minute, which amounts to an incredible 10,000 liters of air each day. That's a lot of work, but don't sweat it. Your lungs and your autonomic nervous system have got it covered. So now we're up to the circulatory system. Circulatory system is like the word circulatory means like to circle or to go around. So when we say circulatory, it's to circulate. It means to pass or cause to pass from place to place or from person to person. So we're just moving things around basically. So imagine the circulatory system, it's a circle. Things are moving around. The purpose is to transport food, wastes, oxygen, and provides immunity or healing properties. So this also helps transport hormones throughout your body. And now a lot of you aren't gonna wanna hear about hormones, but wait, I don't care. Um, okay, so now we have both veins and arteries are both organs in this system. And a lot of people think that's kind of confusing. So when they give off the oxygen and they're coming back to the heart, we're gonna consider that a vein and when they're coming from the lungs and the heart, um, when they're all full of that oxygen, they're going to be considered arteries. So part of these are the tiny little things called capillaries. Kind of already mentioned those earlier. But so we've got the artery here going in, we've got the smaller capillaries, and then we've got the vein going out. So you can think of sort of the uh, veins and arteries as this system that's sending uh, obviously the blood around but then it also has to get smaller to get to smaller cells and smaller tissues and so we have these capillaries joining where those systems are now it's sort of like the same system in plants plants don't have veins or arteries they have um, xylem and phloem but you can kind of see the same vein system when you look really close to a leaf you can see how it branches out because all of the food, all of the nutrients, all of this stuff, liquids, waters, all of this needs to get to every single cell in the body of yourself or in the plant itself. So the circulatory system circulates blood throughout your entire body. Our major organs here are gonna be the heart and blood vessels, but veins circulate blood from the body back to the heart. Um, it's also full of waste products, which are kinda gross, but your body has to use it to be able to clean itself and pull of these waste products out of the cells and dispose of them. So when your blood goes through your liver or your kidneys uh, or your lungs, it disposes of these waste products. So your kidney and your liver will get rid of waste products that will either exit through the, you're not gonna like this word, but anus, at, or through the um, urinary system through the bladder and out the, the urethra. Um, or we can have the, like I said before, the carbon dioxide um, coming out the lungs. Um, so these, these, um, uh, sorry, uh, the veins actually have valves inside of them. Um, the arteries have muscles that kind of help push the blood through, but the vein, not so much. So veins actually have these valves or doors that shut through them. So 
So when the blood pumps uh, and the pressure's not high from that pumping and the, the heart stops pumping, it will actually close all these vents so the blood doesn't run backwards in your body. And then the next push of blood through your heart, pushing all that blood through your body, will actually open those valves, let the blood pass, and then shut again so they don't shut. So I know a lot of you have heard um, sort of this misconception that blood is red um, and then it turns blue when it doesn't have oxygen and diagrams like this definitely don't help. But the truth is blood is actually red. So here, ah, everybody knows I hate needles, but here I'm not going to look. I'm going to close my eyes while I talk about it. So here is someone drawing blood out of a vein of a person. And in this tube, it's not full of air, it's actually a vacuum, and that's why the blood is able to flow out of the vein and into this vacuum tool. Now, the vacuum means it's, it has no air, it has nothing inside of it. And the, it'll help the blood flow into this container and not resist the flow. So there's nothing in this container, there's no oxygen to make the blood red. But as the needle goes in the arm, ow, sorry, um, the blood will flow into this vial and it's already red as you can definitely see it coming out. It's definitely not blue or, or purple. Um, no, it looks that kind of greenish or bluish color through your skin because our skin has layers of fat and as the red blood, the light is gonna be going through your skin and, and allowing this, this color to come through. The, because it has to come through this fat layer, it actually absorbs some of that red light coming out. And so you actually don't see that red light coming out. You can try this at home. You can actually take um, a red light or uh, red strings or something. And then you can put milk in a plastic baggie and put that milk over top of it. And those, those red lines, uh, depending on how many layers of milk you have, they don't look so red anymore. It's kind of weird. Try that at home. So your not, body needs blood not just because it's like a weird color and you just like to have liquids, but it brings nutrients and food. It brings oxygen and water and hormones to all of our cells. And then it also helps remove all those wastes that we need to get rid of. Bad chemicals or just used chemicals, dead blood cells. Most of your poop is actually dead red blood cells. You're welcome. Um, and carbon dioxide. And then also there's blood clots that your body has to remove over time as well. So blood is actually a tissue um, and it's part of the veins and arteries. So it's part of the tissues of this organ of the veins and arteries. So a lot of times people wonder what blood is actually made of. So we've got different types of blood cells. So we have red blood cells. Now those are primarily responsible for the transport of the nutrients, the food, the oxygen, the wastes, and it takes everything where it needs to go. Uh, chemicals will bind to these red blood cells you can see here in this background image. Um, the one weird thing about red blood cells is they have no nucleus. They are made, they're actually made in, in your bones, in the bone marrow. And when they're produced, they don't have a nucleus that helps repair them. They don't have DNA. They don't have the instructions to get better if they get destroyed. So you actually make a lot of blood all the time. And that, and so as soon as the red blood cell gets used up, it gets very oxygenated by all the oxygen. It doesn't repair itself and it dies um, in your body and then ends up having to be taken away and, and put in the waste products and turned into poop. All right, the next blood cell we have here is the white blood cell. White blood cells defend the body by attacking foreign invaders. So when I say foreign invaders, I mean things like fungus and bacteria and viruses. And they actually do contain a nucleus. They kind of have to be smart and know what they're doing. Let's zoom in on some of what these, some of these look like. So here we've got the red blood cells in the background. This is kind of an artist rendition. This is actually a photograph. It's black and white, um, so it's kind of weird here, but this is actually a red blood cell. So I know it all looks white because it's black and white. This is your red blood cell. This over here is your white blood cell. And then this little cell is actually a platelet. It's like sticky things. So like when you get cuts and they're oozing 
clear liquid. It looks like you're you're oozing water or something. You're actually oozing these sticky platelets will eventually dry and they seal up the hole. Um, so they're actually really valuable, if you can imagine. All right, so platelets, like I just said, is a liquid. It's um, cytoplasm, so it's kind of the similar stuff that's inside of your cells that the organelles are floating around in. But when it's exposed to other chemicals, it will clot. It will become sticky and hard. So your your scab, even though it's got some red blood cells in it, and that's why it's kind of brownish color, but your scab is primarily made up of platelets. This is what helps you not bleed to death and die when you get any sort of cut. Um, so it's really kind of a cool thing. It's kind of like a natural band-aid for your body. So blood flows or circulates from the heart in the arteries, and arteries have valves and muscles that help make arteries bigger or smaller. So here you can, I believe we're kind of already zoomed in on this, but here is your heart. Actually, we have a four chamber heart. We have one, two, three, four. Not all organisms do. We're going to do a frog dissection soon. And the frog actually has a three chamber heart, which is kind of cool. But blood will actually move from one side of the heart to the next. And it will move on through these massive arteries to the lungs, get oxygenated, go throughout the entire body, and then come up through these massive veins, um, and then come back into the heart. So the blood, which is a tissue in the circulatory system, has different types, kind of already talked about that. Um, and I know we're running out of time here, so I'm actually gonna skip over this, but we didn't know that people had different blood types like uh you might have heard of like a or ab negative or o or something positive these are all different types of blood and you can't just give blood to anybody because your body will actually attack it and make you very very sick um so blood type knowing someone's blood type before you give them a blood transfusion is very important and again we don't have time so i'm not going to cover that sorry we're going to move on to the next slide. All right, so now we have the circulatory system. C-I-R-C-U-L-A-T-O-R-Y, circulatory system. All right, now let's write down our function. So down here at the bottom, we're going to write down our function of the circulatory system. Now our circulatory system, its function is to transport nutrients, water, and oxygen to cells, and then take away wastes. So here I'm going to say transport nutrients. water and oxygen to the cells and then so it and takes away waste All right, so our major organs there. Our major organs here are the heart, and then our veins and arteries, A-R-T-E-R-I-E-S, art, er, Eve. Almost looks exactly like it's spelled. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw us in a heart. It's almost Valentine's Day, so if you can't resist drawing a little cartoon heart, I wouldn't blame you. But I'm going to try to draw a realistic, nasty looking heart that, you know, has blood pumping through it. So I've got here, I've got my artery coming out, I've got my veins coming out. 
If you want to draw them different colors like most diagrams have them, um, go right ahead, draw the blue ones and the red ones, but in reality we know that's not a real thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw mine all, diff all the same color. So I'm going to draw it very similarly to how I drew my nervous system. I'm going to make it look like a bunch of rivers flowing through valleys because everywhere, especially my stomach to get me food, yum yum, everywhere needs to have veins and arteries. But okay, unlike the vein, unlike sorry, the nervous system, they actually don't end at a place. They all connect to each other and they come right back around. Now don't forget your brain needs some oxygen too. So make sure those blood vessels get up into the brain. This is a very terrible drawing of blood vessels, but it's okay. It's your world. You're the creator. Okay, I think that's enough nonsense. Okay, I can't stop. My leg looks weird. All right, fix the leg. Yay! Okay, there's my heart. There's my veins. There's my arteries. Now on to the part of the body which I very inappropriately call the poop train. This is the digestive system. The digestive system is how your blood actually gets food in the first place. And then it's also where your blood dumps all of the junk when we're done with the food as well. So the digestive system, the purpose is to break down the food, absorb nutrients and water, and then remove the waste products. Okay, let's go back here. Sorry, hold on, hold on. Can't miss some of this stuff. So um, here, we've got a few more organs in, than we had in the respiratory system, but you'll notice some of these organs are very similar. So we've got here the nasal cavity, we've got the mouth. Um, we'd actually use different terms for these, but we don't need to know things like pharynx and larynx and all that stuff, so we're just gonna pretend that we don't care. And then here, this one we are going to mention, we are going to write this one down, the esophagus. The esophagus actually is behind the trachea. We can't see the trachea in this picture because it's not part of this system. But it's behind the trachea and it's made up of a bunch of smooth muscles that as soon as you eat food, they'll actually activate this muscle automatically. You don't have to think about swallowing food after you've swallowed it and make it keep going on down. But it will actually pinch and push it all the way down until it squirts it out of a sphincter, that's a lovely word, a sphincter, um, into this cavity here called the stomach. And the stomach actually doesn't eat your food. And a lot of people think, oh, my stomach, it's helping me digest my food. What it does is it doesn't absorb anything. It's basically an acidic pot of death for anything that goes into your body. It will slowly be eaten by acid, or not eaten, but dissolved by acid, turned into a liquidy soup, and then when it's done, it will come from here, down here to another sphincter, yay, um, and that sphincter will squirt that material into this mess of um, intestines. These are the small intestines. There's a lot more of it, which is confusing to me a little bit. There's a lot of small intestine and very little large intestine, but the large intestine is larger and that's what we call it. All right, so here, this is where your food actually gets absorbed or taken up in your body. So for me, this is like where you actually kind of eat. This is where um, the blood vessels are going to be attached to this place. We've got the intestines absorbing all of these nutrients and they're taking they're allowing the blood it's seeping in through the intestines and allowing the blood to take it somewhere else now when your blood's done with it it starts to bring it back to your large intestine your colon uh, all this jazz and it starts to put all the waste products in here and say, ew, I don't need this anymore. And so it empties into here. And some of the stuff that your body couldn't absorb from your small intestine will go empty right in here. I'm not sure, but probably another sphincter. Um, and then all of this stuff will start to accumulate. You've got bile that's helping the lubrication. So it moves smoothly through this nice poop train. 
and then eventually it gets through the poop tract, which I'm calling the large intestine, and then it gets to this place here, the rectum. Um, and then when you feel like you need to go to the bathroom, are you so glad you came to class today? Uh, when you need to go to the bathroom, here, this is where it's going to exit your body. You go to the toilet and you feel the urge to poop. You open up your last sphincter of your body and the poop comes out the anus. All these words you definitely wanted to hear today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Let's write down some stuff about the poop train. Uh, let's not call it the poop train, though. Let's call it the digestive system. Digest... Tiv, D I G E S T I V E system. So here we've got the digestive system. We're going to have the mouth. We don't need the nose this time. Um, if you've had Mr. Shaw, he's probably already said the word mastication. That's like one of his favorite words, and it means to chew. So it's like a really big word just to say, hey, I'm eating. Sorry about that, my camera cut out for a minute. Keeps going in and out on me. All right, so we've got our mouth here to do our mastication process of chewing up our food to make it smaller so it's easier for our stomach to turn it into liquidy, gooey, juicy nastiness. Um, and then grab whatever color you think the esophagus is. Of course, I'm gonna go for my red again. And that esophagus is gonna empty into your stomach. So make it kind of hooky thing. It almost looks like a question mark. And then we're going to make a little like a ball thing. Oh, I kind of screwed that up, but it looks like my stomach has a tumor. It's okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in, what, what should I put in? Let's say a meatball. Here we go. Meatball. I just ate a meatball. And apparently I swallowed it whole. My goodness. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't when you draw things, I guess you don't really think about what you're doing. All right, so here this is going to empty into my small intestine. So I'm just going to make a bumpy whatever line moving around my body. Make it look nice and thick. All right, now I'm going to choose a different color so it actually looks like my large intestine is something else. I don't know what color it is in the body because, you know, I'm never cut anything open because that's gross um but here as this ends i'm going to go ahead and connect it to my large intestine and my large intestine is called the large intestine because it's chubby bigger this is where the poop is made this is the magic maker right here and then there is where it empties into the rectum and the anus Again, words you wanted to hear so badly today. I just know it. All right, once you've got those drawn, let's go ahead and write the function and the organs that we need to know about this digestive system. So here we go, the function, the function. Function here is to break down food break down food, absorb nutrients and water, nutrients, N-U-T-R-I-E-N-T-S, and water. And then it also excretes that's a cool, funky word. So, excretes, E-X-C-R-E-T-E-S, excretes solid wastes. Emphasis on the solid, unless, of course, you're sick, and then it might be kind of squirty. Solid wastes. All right, so our organs... Our organs that we want to know here, um, again, mouth is not technically an organ, but we're going to say that in general. So our mouth, our esophagus, that, that pipe up here that brings the food down to the stomach automatically with its smooth muscles. So we're going to call that the esophagus. 
Let's go ahead and spell that. E S O. I'm going to run out of room. P H A G U S. Esophagus. Our stomach. Stomach. Almost match. Stomach. And we're just going to solve the intestines. We don't need to know small and large intestine. We just know the intestines. Intestines. That's I N T E S T I N E S. And anus. I know half of you are laughing right now, but it's okay. We're going to write down the anus and we're going to we're going to be okay. We're going to move on. And we're going to survive. All right, next up is the urinary system. The urinary system, we kind of talked about this a little bit when we were talking about, um, I don't know why we were talking about this, but we talked about the urinary system a little bit already. But the purpose of it is to move waste and toxins, very similar to the excretory, uh, sorry, the, um, my brain shut off, the digestive system. The urinary system is actually also called the excretory system because it excretes things out of your body. Another fun, f fun word. Um, but it removes waste and toxin and also does electrolyte water balance. So inside of your kidneys, hold on one second. There we go. I can't get that thing to stop following my mouse. It's really annoying. So inside your kidneys here that look like kidney beans, and again, we named kidney beans after the kidneys, not the other way around. Inside your kidneys, the blood, you can hear, here are the veins and arteries here bringing blood to and from the kidneys. Blood will go in through the kidneys and the kidneys basically filter the blood. It'll extract toxins out of it and then it will also extract water. And that water has the toxins dissolved inside of it. And what's really cool, this extraction process will happen where the kidneys will actually remove those toxins out of the water, out of the blood, and then remove as much and put as much water back into the body in the bloodstream as it possibly can to help um, conserve that water inside your body. So you'll notice when you get dehydrated, your kidneys will still be trying to extract as much water out as you can, and your, your urine gets very yellow, very dark. And that's not really good for your body. I think, um, I can't remember who asked me about kidney stones uh, last time. Maybe it was Brock. I, I don't know. I can't remember. But somebody asked about kidney stones. Probably Kenyon. I don't know. Um, but this is one of the ways that you can actually get kidney stones is by not drinking enough water. When you have so little water, the kidneys can only do so much. And then it's got those concentrated amounts of those chemicals inside of your kidneys and they start to grow into crystals and those crystals get bigger and bigger and then it causes major problems but if you drink a lot more water then it helps relieve this problem now that's one of the reasons why they think that men um, get kidney stones more often than women do and it's because men just tend to not drink as much as many fluids um, as they need to for their body size and so they, they tend to go longer uh, periods of time without drinking water. So get plenty of water. If your your urine is not very yellow, it's just slightly yellow and it looks mostly clear, then you're drinking enough water. So like I said, the urinary system, it removes useful stuff like water and nutrients and it puts it back into the blood, which is super awesome. Um, and it takes other stuff out, this chemical called urea, and it removes salts from your body, right, and helps do an acid-base balance. It removes toxins, and it just helps to maintain a healthy and good blood pressure. So our major organs here are going to be the kidneys, the uterus, bladder, and urethra. All right, so, goodness sakes, let's go ahead and zoom in on this urinary system here. So here we got the kidneys. We can kind of see like we've sliced them open. We've got their arteries here. These pipes right here that go from the kidneys and it's, it's extracted everything it needs, puts the good things back into the blood and 
takes the, the nasty stuff and a little bit of water and the urea and all that junk and it puts down these tubes. These tubes that lead to the bladder are called the ureter. U-R-E-T-E-R, -E -E the ureter. It's a weird word, I don't like it. Um, but it empties into your bladder and when your bladder gets enough of this fluid in here, it makes it feel like you're gonna pee your pants and you get this pain and it's like, oh, you need to pee. And then it finally exits, you can't really see it right here because it's not showing the urethra, but it exits through the urethra out of your body. Now urethra, some reason, some kids always think that that's something that a boy has and a girl doesn't, but all of us, have to pee, so all of us have a urethra attached to the bladder. All right, go to your next page, and it looks like I might have left, oh, no, there it is, there it is. sorry. I'm gonna grab this paper here. Um, go ahead, we're gonna flip to the next page uh, that you have, and we're gonna draw on this next body, we're gonna call this we're actually going to call it first the excretory system. E X C R E excretory. And I'm going to say slash because it's its second name. So it's going to be the excretory or the urinary. Sounds like canary, but it's U R I N A R Y. Uri nary system so on the test you might see excretory you may see urinary you might see both of them so just make sure you know both terms excretory and urinary systems all right so for our function very similar to the digestive system our function is to conserve water Conserve water and remove liquid waste. So liquid waste would also include anything that's dissolved in the blood. So I know salts are typically considered a solid, but because it's dissolved in liquid, we, we're going to consider it part of the liquid waste. So it's gonna remove liquid waste from the blood, from the blood and body. All right, so our organs here, make sure I have it high enough for you to see. Organs, the only organs we're gonna to need to know actually here, I'm not gonna make you know urethra, I'm not gonna make you know the ureters, we're gonna do our two major ones here. So we're gonna do the kidneys, Kind of sounds like the knees of a child, the kidneys. That's what's going to be doing the extraction process. And then our bladder, B-L-A-D-D-E-R, bladder, that holding place for all that urine. All right, let's go ahead and draw it in on our little human thing here. So our human here, we're going to put a a little bit lower than the waist. We got the waist here, and then we have these kidneys. Go ahead and draw yourself a kidney bean, and another kidney bean, and then the ureter. Well, I, I'm going to draw a bladder first, so I know how far to make my ureters, and then I'm going to draw my little urethra going to the the out hole, and then I'm going to draw my little lines to it. Feel free again to color it. Kidneys are actually a kind of a red-brown color. So if you actually wanted to do it, uh, the red color, that would be great. Again, color makes everything better. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and color my bladder yellow, cause <laughs> you know why I'm coloring it yellow. I don't need to explain that. All right, next up is the muscular system. So the muscular system is not just what you're seeing on the outside. I know we, we look at all these muscles um, all the time. We think, okay, that must be the muscular system. 
And it is a big part of the muscular system, but the muscular system isn't just what we see on the outside. So the purpose of the muscular system is to provide bodily movement and create body heat. It also helps us maintain posture and helps to circulate the blood. Um, and I'm not talking about the muscles that you flex, but there are muscles that actually exist through your arteries that help you circulate your blood. So we have a few different types of muscles. So we've got cardiac muscle, which is the muscle that helps contract the heart and make the heart boom, 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 beat. And we've got smooth muscle, like I already talked about with the esophagus that helps to bring that bolus of food all the way down to the stomach. And we've got muscles in the stomach that help kind of massage your food. We've got muscles in the lower intestine, smooth muscles. These are muscles you don't have to think about. Let me go back a little bit. Muscles you don't have to think about that they just happen. They just work throughout your body without having to have you think about having to make them work. And then we also have the ones that you think about of actually existing, which are is the, the skeletal muscles. We call them skeletal muscles, not because skeletons have muscles, but because the muscles are attached to the skeleton of your body. These are the ones that actually help you move as you walk, you talk, you chew, you whistle, you make obnoxious noises during class that you shouldn't. All of those movements are caused by your skeletal muscles. So your major components of your skeleton, uh, I'm sorry, of the uh, muscular system are your skeletal muscles, your smooth muscles, and your cardiac muscles. So see this dude? Let's go ahead and draw something like that into our diagram. So let's go ahead and right at the top, we're going to write muscular system. So M-U-S. M-U-S-C-U-L-A-R, you can't see that very well, M-U-S-C-U-L-A-R system, S-Y-S-T-E-M, so our muscular system, and again, I'm going to use red again, because muscles, so I'm going to start with the pecs, because I, I, no reason, um, so here, I've got my strong muscles, and I'm going to make lines because muscles are like these striations. And I'm going to do the other pec because my other arm wants to function too. And I've got these muscles on my shoulders to make that part of my arm go. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but that's my insane son who's laughing in the basement. He's literally in the basement and I am not and I can hear him very clearly from here. Um, so here I'm going to get my stomach, my six pack that I totally have under my layers of, um, winter comfiness. Um, and then actually there's more muscles here, but you get the point. I actually, the, yeah, just pretend that I did it right. It's okay. We don't have to be perfect. We just need the general idea. So I've got these muscles here. I've got these muscles here. I'm gonna go ahead and put myself in some leg muscles. There's a lot more muscles than I'm putting in, but we're just gonna make the gist of it. So I got a muscle here, I got a muscle on this side, and then I'm sure there's muscles to make my feet work, but you know, I don't know what they are. So muscle, 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 man. That's not the song, just so you know. Uh, muscles, 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 muscles. Every, everywhere. All right, there's also muscles to help your eye movement. So you can go ahead and put some muscles around your eyes and muscles around your mouth. Oh, no. I look like I made a beard, uh, but that's okay. So kind of, kind of, oh, that foot doesn't work because it doesn't have any muscles. Yeah, sure. Um, so there we go. We got our muscular system. Uh, now, we didn't really do any heart muscles. We didn't do any um, muscles in the esophagus or veins, but we'll go ahead and, and write down those those things down here. F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. You shouldn't try to talk and, and spell at the same time. So function, our function here for the muscular system is going to be that it supports the body. 
So that would specifically be our skeletal muscles. Um, and then it also allows for movement. And that movement can be walking and talking and talking when you shouldn't be in class or, you know, talking to a friend or talking to your parent or eh, don't care. Um, but it also includes that movement for moving food down in your stomach, massaging the food in your, your belly, squishing the food and being absorbed by your intestines and moving it along what you can't digest to the, through the poop train. All of that would be included in um, movement, allowing movement um, in throughout the body or for the body to move itself. So our organs, every individual muscle, so like this muscle right here, well, that's not a real muscle. This muscle here, the, your calf muscle here, that's a specific organ. One of your abs would be one muscle organ. Uh, one of these pecs, these pectoral muscles, that is an organ. So we're actually gonna generally call that the skeletal muscles. Skel, S K S K S K E L, skel, e, tol, muscles, skeletal muscles, our smooth muscles, like those in our um, esophagus or intestines. And then lastly, the one that makes our heart go boom, 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 the cardiac. Cardiac. Not like Cardi B, but cardiac muscles. It's very possible that none of you are old enough to know who Cardi B is because your parents are good parents and they don't let you listen to Cardi B, but cardiac muscles. All right, so our next system is the skeletal system. You guys probably all know this one really well. It's all the bones in your body, but it's not just made up of your bones. Let me go back, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. It's all the tissues like tendons, ligaments, and cartilage that connect all your bones together and connect them to muscles as well. Teeth are also part of your skeletal system, but they actually are not bones. They're like specialized enamel systems. They're a little bit different. Your bones actually can repair themselves and they're living and alive and they do awesome things like make blood inside of your body, but your teeth, they don't do that. It can't repair itself and you get a cavity and you have to go to the dentist and they drill into your face after it's all numb and then you can't eat ice cream for like an hour because you just drool all over yourself. But, um, so that, they're a little bit different. So if we here, we look at the, the teeth um, here, let me zoom in on your teeth. Your teeth are not bones. They are. They do have a living root inside of them, though. That's why you can sense and feel. You got nerves in them, allowing you to sense pressure. Um, here, an example of how tendons and ligaments, ligaments, sorry, work. Your tendons will physically grow into and attach to your muscles, and then they also attach to your bone. You can kind of see that here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So this tendon, you've probably seen it when you've, you've made chicken or whatever, or like bitten into chicken and there's like rubbery thing you can't chew. That is what actually makes the muscle go up and down. Um, it connected to your bones allows you to move. It allows you to punch things. It allows you to cheer. It allows you to do gymnastics. It allows you to hold a pencil and take notes, which I'm sure is equally interesting. Um, to those two activities. So that's your tendons, your ligaments. So your your hands, um, if you put your hands up and flex it so your fingers are straight up and like back as far as they go naturally, you'll see these things that a lot of people think are bones, but they're not actually bones, they're actually tendons. But inside your hand, you don't have like one bone. You've got a bunch of little tiny bones. I can't zoom in here. So you've got all these finger bones and your thumb bones. I actually consider these fingers, but I'm going to call them thumb bones. So you got a bone here, you got a bone here, bone here. You got these little fingers here, little baby pinky. You got three bones here for this finger. And then you've got these bones in your hands. And then you've got a ton of little tiny bones right here. And all this thing that looks like spider web, all that stuff are ligaments that hold your bones 
to other bones. So tendons hold muscles to bones and ligaments hold bones to bones. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones. All right, so teeth are actually the hardest things in your body. They're not actually classified as bones because the, the actual like hard part of it is not living. Um, your bones are actually made up of living cells, even though they're kind of hard and calcium-like. Um, no, 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 go back, go back. We want to look at the tooth some more. All right, so go back. So here's your tooth. This is all the inside of your tooth, the nerve, the root. It's got all these nerves in it to help sense the surroundings. So your enamel here, this enamel here, grows a little bit more every year while you guys are going through puberty and getting new teeth and... And then you get older and you get finally these fully developed molars in the back of your mouth. Some of you might already have your 12 year molars and everything. Um, but all of this stuff is actually dead. You don't feel this stuff. This is the enamel from the outside. Here, this is kind of a softer stuff, dentin. And if a, a bacteria or, or sugar bugs, as sometimes the dentist calls them, drills in here and gets into this, this dentin, you actually can feel pain every time you eat sugar and it's not good because it will help slowly make your teeth weaken but anyway so teeth can't repair themselves but bones totally can so bones are really cool um so the purpose of of these organs i know it's hard to think of a bone as being an organ but a bone is totally an organ but it provides support and structure for your body to be able to stand up and do stuff um so plants use um cellulose which is this hard stiff stuff and cell walls to help them stand but we use bones and our bones also make blood that's where all the blood is made right here in the middle of the bone is where the blood is made this is called the bone marrow that's I think kind of really interesting and fascinating so like we said here the skeletal system all these bones help give support and make the body be able to move and make blood in the system. Um, we already talked about that. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, one more thing. Oh, that's in the, in the bones, in the skeletal system, is this cartilage. We have cartilage in between every single one of our vertebrae. This is a, this is a backbone, in case you're not familiar with what a backbone looks like. And it's got some problems down below. But right here, these squishy discs... This helps cushion between bones. This stuff is called cartilage. Your nose is actually, well, underneath the skin anyway, your nose is made of cartilage and your ears are made of cartilage, but inside, in between your bones, you've got um, cartilage discs as well. Now over here, your knees also have these cartilage discs. This one's a damaged one, but here we've got this cartilage so the bones don't rub, rub and grind on each other. We've got this soft tissue to help cushion that. So our major components here are going to be the bones, ligament, tendon, tendons, sorry, cartilage, and teeth. I'm trying to go faster and faster because I know I've been talking way too much. Go ahead and sketch in our skeletal system here. So here our label is going to be skeletal, S-K-E-L-E-T-A-L, -E skeletal system. And our skeletal system... I'm going to start with a skull because I like to start with a skull. So here I've got my skull. I've got my eye sockets. It looks kind of like an alien, but that's okay. I've got my nasal holes or cavities as normal people would call them. Got my bones, my bones, my teeth. I just got done telling you that they weren't bones and then I accidentally call them bones anyway bad issues it's okay that's okay to have issues sometimes all right there we go oh, that looks just like a skull <laughs> perfect all right now i'm going to draw myself some vertebrae i don't know how many many vertebrae we have um i'm just going to go ahead and draw some now i've drawn a little bit of cartilage in between these so if you see little tiny boxes that's what i'm drawing i'm going all the way down to the pelvic bone where I'm going to have this weird triangular bone, our tailbone, 
drawn in, and then I'm going to draw these weird bones that actually our hips walk into. It kind of looks like a butterfly. So I've got this ball socket. I'm going to draw myself a bone there. I've got a ball socket bone here. Ooh. And then I got my tibia and my fibia. And then my kneecap. A kneecap actually is attached to my bone with some ligaments. And then I got a whole bunch of little bones here in my feet and little bones for my toes. And that's all attached with ligaments. Now I'm not gonna draw all the bones because we'll be here for half the day. Um, and it's not like I know all the bones anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and write down our function. Our function for the skeletal system. If you can remember, our function for our skeletal system was to provide structure. To provide structure for the body. So it provides structure for the body and something for muscles to pull against. So something for muscles, I'm gonna say pull to pull on because I'm running out of room. So instead of saying against, I'm gonna say on because I don't, I don't have enough space. All right here, so our organs my organ, my organs here are going to be bones, major one there. Oh, oh, we didn't say they make blood. So here, let's sneak in here for the function. Put, it makes blood. That is an extremely important function. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I almost didn't write it down. Very important. You would not live without blood. So anyway, so my organs, my organs will be bones. Um, also going to be tendons and ligaments, L-I-G, lig, a, uh, ment, and cartilage. I left teeth off. If you want to put teeth down, you go right ahead. All right, so we've got our function, provides structure for the body and something for muscles to pull on, makes blood, and our organs are bones, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. Woot woot. All right. All right, this one's a weird one for you. It's really weird sounding. Um, you see the word, big word right up there. I'm going to say it slow. In tag you Mentary. Integumentary. It looks like you intend your gum, but it's, it's not gum, it's goo. So, integumentary. Integumentary system. Holy Hannah. Integumentary system. So, that is a massive word. That means basically your skin. So it could be like skin system, but it's not. It's the integumentary system. So the integumentary system, I said clicky button. The integumentary system is the skin and all the tissues that work together to protect you from the outside environment. Now let's go ahead. My computer went naughty for a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in on this diagram of skin that you totally didn't want to look at, but we're going to look at anyway. So we got all this dead skin out here on the top, and then we have this weird skin cell that makes hair, and then we've got this other one that secretes oils and liquids on our surface to keep the dead skin cells from being flaky and dry. And then we've got these fresh skin cells that eventually will become dead skin cells. And we've got this series of blood and veins, so arteries and, and veins that, that feed food and water to our cells. And then we've got all of this stuff, all of these, let's see, these are glands that help secrete stuff. And then we also have all of these little sensing organs that help tell us if something's hard or hot or 
cold um, or sharp, all of those nerves in there. And then we also have this fat tissue to help retain heat so we don't lose a lot of heat out of our body as well. So we've got all these tissues in the integumentary system, the skin system, to help keep us protected from the outside, primarily to keep us from getting like bacteria and stuff inside of us. Now here's a photograph of skin. So if you thought that diagram was gross, you should totally let's zoom in because we're not close enough. So these are hair right here. These are these are a bunch of hairs and they've got skin cells that are flaking off on them. Your skin actually sloughs off a ton of skin cells all the time. Um, most of the dust in your house is like from you and your pets and stuff. It's like actual skin cells. It's kind of gross. But yeah, think about that for a minute. But anyway, hair helps to serve as a way to keep animals warm. Um, not all animals have hair. They have other ways of doing this. But our way, one of it's kind of help retain that heat in our body. And also, when it's drenched in sweat, it helps keep us cool. So hair can kind of retain liquids a little bit. So hair is actually modified dead skin cells. Uh, mostly made out of a protein called keratin, which you may have heard of. Uh, keratin is also the same stuff that sharks have on the outside of their body. So nails and hair, um, nails just like hair, are also dead. So let's be on your fingernails there, now your toenails. They're made out of protein called keratin too. So it's kind of the same as your hair cells. Oh, you know what? I think right down here. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to skip it. We're running out of time here. Um, so another component of the integumentary system is, yeah, the skin. So the purpose of the integumentary system is to protect us from disease and harm, helps regulate body temperature. Um, it also helps us have vitamin D synthesis. So you go outside, you get hit by UV radiation from the sun. It helps you synthesize or make vitamin D workable in your body. That would be another way to say synthesize. And also acts as a sensory organ to the outside world. So skin is also has stuff to keep it from overheating and drying out. And that's what the sweat glands are for. Helps you stay cool. Skin has many layers to it, just like onions or ogres. The outside ones are dead. They protect you by shedding away slowly over time. And skin cells, skin cells actually die really quickly. They only live about two to three weeks. So after about two to three weeks, um, the cell has been created. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. You can kind of see this. So we get a skin cell, it divides, and it's kind of being pushed outside as more divide, and then they create it from below. Here, this cell is only gonna live about two or three weeks. So it finally gets up here, slowly dies, and then becomes this outside protective, protective layer of your skin we call the epidermis. You may have heard somebody say, uh, point at someone and say, ha, your epidermis is showing, because they're lame, kind of like Mrs. Grether. Um, that just means the outside of your skin. So it's okay if your epidermis is showing, because everybody's epidermis is showing. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. So I uh, estimated 20 to 25 to 40% of the dust in your home, it just comes from your dead skin cells, either from you and or your pets. Uh, most of your skin cells will actually slough off in the shower or the bath. So not, you know, not all of it is, is hanging around you when you walk around in the house. Yummy. Um, let's go ahead and keep going here. We don't need to know all of that. Self. Oh my goodness, cat main organ here is going to be the skin. All right, so this next system is going to be the endocrine system. Endocrine, I like to say the saying, endocrine secretes within because the endocrine system are a series of 
Um, um, sorry. It's a series of glands that run throughout your body that help secrete hormones and that help to communicate different things to different cells and different tissues. Now, a lot of times people talk about hormones and they're like, oh, teenagers, they're raging hormones. And they're all like, oh, no one wants to talk about hormones because hormones means talking about puberty and nobody wants to talk about puberty. But honestly, most of the hormones in your body have nothing to do with puberty. Um, you have hormones that tell you that you need to sweat. You have hormones that like uh, tell you you need to be excited and be ready for your cells to take up energy at any time. That one you've probably heard of. It's called adrenaline. So, uh, I mean, adrenaline is a hormone. Some of these hormones are actually proteins. Remember how we talked about how proteins are not just muscles. That proteins just do things in the body. It's all the doers in the body. And so a lot of these proteins, or a lot of these things are, are our hormone, hormones are actually made of proteins. Some of them are made of steroids. So they, they tell your body to grow when it needs to grow. Um, another hormone in your body would be insulin. Especially if you're a diabetic, you know what insulin is, or if you know what it, uh, if you know a diabetic in your family, um, insulin is a hormone that tells your body, hey, it's time to take up, um, it's time to take up sugar. We've got too much sugar in the blood. Um, cells take in that sugar. So we're going to talk about this really quickly. There's a lot of slides here about. Um, the endocrine system, but we don't need to know too much about it. Just the fact that endocrine, endo actually means within and crin means to secrete. So literally the word endocrine means to secrete from within. Um, so a hormone, again, is a regulatory subst substance produced in organisms and transported by uh, tissues such as blood or saps. And it tells the tissues to take action, to do something. So the endocrine, endocrine system, our major organs here are going to be the hypothalamus glands. So our hypothalamus glands and pancreas. We're actually just going to say glands on our paper, so don't write that down. But the purpose is to secrete hormones to communicate and or, or control body mechanisms. All right, so endocrine system, uh, E-N-D-O, endo, meaning within, and crin means to secrete endocrine system. It's a series of glands in your body. So we're just going to go ahead and, and dot some of these glands that are in your brain that, that are important here. We're going to draw this one here. You can actually feel this one in your throat. If you put your throat back, it's like this squishy thing um, on either side. You can't really... Hold on, let me find the slide that actually has this so you can see what I'm doing. I'm doing it myself and you can't see a lick of what I'm doing. So just really quickly, we so we have the pineal gland that's sitting there in the brain. That very tiny one is lit up, it's all orange there. Helps you go to sleep, secretes that melatonin. The pancreas, this is where it's gonna be secreting insulin. It also creates digestive enzymes here inside this gland. Uh, this is kind of gonna sit right next to the stomach, which makes sense. Pituitary gland, another gland that's inside of your brain. This is what's going to control your growth and development and actually kind of controls the functioning of all, like a bunch of other glands. The gonads, this is the ones you don't want to hear today. Uh, these are going to, the gonads is a word to mean testes or, or ovaries, but this is where testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and pheromones are going to be created. Uh, testosterone is that hormone that's gonna make men have a little bit more uh, muscle tissue than women. Estrogen is that hormone that's gonna cause women to put a lot, of, a little bit more um, weight onto the hips. Uh, the adrenal glands, these are gonna sit on top of the kidneys. These actually also produce sex hormones, and by sex hormones I mean like testosterone, estrogen, uh, progesterone, um, and cortisol, uh, which actually helps your body respond to stress. Um, it also helps to increase your blood sugar and suppress the immune system. So if you're like really busy or you're running and you need to do something, it'll help suppress the immune system um, so that you don't feel so sick 
And then once you, you're done running around being crazy or trying to run from the lion or whatever it is, uh, your immune system will kick back in. I'm just going to skip. I'm going really fast. Thyroid. This is the thing I told you you could feel. So this, this gland here secretes hormones that help control your growth and how your metabolism is. So if you can eat a lot of food and you gain no weight, you have a high metabolism because of this gland here. So right here, if you put your throat back and you put your hand there, you can actually feel feel it. it's kind of squishy don't push too hard though so you can feel that there that squishy gland on either side of your throat that's your thyroid and then your hypothalamus is another little tiny gland that's inside your brain let me zoom in on your hypothalamus there that's what controls hunger your thirst homeostasis all that that jazz so yeah, throughout your whole body, you got a you got a ton of glands. So let's give it a hypothalamus, sure, your thyroid, your pancreas. I'm gonna pretend it's right here somewhere. And then you've got these glands on top of your kidneys. You've got some glands down here. We won't mention because some people are going to get embarrassed. Uh, so yeah, we're just got these series of glands throughout your body. Um, and notice that we don't have any in our hands or our arms or our legs. Most of it's gonna be in the brain or kind of in the torso of the body. So here, I'm just gonna color these whatever random colors I want to, because again, color makes everything beautiful. That one's only gonna be half red. I'm gonna make it half red and half yellow and, well, I can't make it three halves because that, that doesn't make sense. There you go, colors, whatever. All right, so our function here, our function here is to communicate between tissues and command the cells to sort of react or act. So I'm gonna to say to act. So that's our function. Our organs here, we're not gonna write hypothalamus or the, the pancreas or the thyroid. We're just gonna say in general, glands. You'll learn uh, more about these actually in high school. Um, I believe in 10th um, grade. 10th grade? Health? I don't remember. But you'll actually learn more about these glands and exactly what they do um, in those classes. So don't worry about learning them right now. So it's okay that we're not going to cover them in too much detail. Our next system is lymphatic system, the lymphatic system. Um, the lymphatic system is part of the circulatory, circulatory system and it's kind of the, what we call the immune system. So lymphatic is, is, is kind of part of the um, immune system. So it also helps to filter blood, absorb fat from the intestines, but it, it's responsible mostly for your immune response. And the major components are going to be our lymph nodes, our lymph vessels, and the spleen. So the lymphatic system helps capture fluid that leave the capillaries and then go and float around by your cells and don't get up taken up by the cells. Your lymphatic system will actually pick it up and it looks a lot like your blood vessels. Um, so you just have this series of sort of tubes and uh, that follow your blood vessels. Here on this x-ray, you can see these little little dots here, these little, little, you barely can see this, but let me zoom in a little bit. This is a lymph node and it's enlarged a little bit because this person is sick and they have a little bit of an infection. And so the doctor's taking an x-ray of them to try to see and pinpoint if there really is an infection in this person's lymph nodes. But um, it helps release, sorry, the lymphatic system helps release lymphocytes 
Uh, those are things that go out and, and kill uh, those nasty cells, those white blood cells, and it releases those things into the circulatory system when there's a sense of um, foreign invaders, like that bacteria, the, the funguses, those kind of things in your blood. The spleen actually helps filter out blood, removes foreign invaders, and is that blood storage reserve. Uh, like we talked about the other day, it helps. The human body holds about a cup of blood inside the spleen. So if you get cut and you lose a little, blood, a little bit of blood, you're not going to die immediately from that blood loss because your spleen is going to help make up for that blood by sending more blood into your body. So the lymphatic system also absorbs fat from the intestines and helps deliver it to the circulatory system. All right, so let's go ahead and note this here. Let's call this the lymphatic system, L-Y-M-P-H, lympha, P-H-A-T-I-C, lymphatic. And then we also call this, I'm going to do a slash, the immune system, I-M-M-U-N-E, immune, S-Y-S-T-E-M. So I'm actually going to do this blue because it's a lot of clear fluids. Um, you can get these little nodes. So go ahead and give your little, little a few nodes. If you've ever gotten sick and you feel that swelling underneath your throat or right underneath your chin, those are swollen lymph nodes. You've got some lymph nodes in your armpits. Go ahead and just give yourself a series of lines. I'm going to give another node in my armpit. i got some nodes behind my lungs. So the series of connected... Uh, tunnels that that hold on to those sicknesses they bring those sicknesses to the lymph nodes to be destroyed um, and and broken up so they can't hurt your body and they can't make you ill and it also helps to pick up some extra stuff that gets left behind by the circulatory system and brings it back to the circulatory system all right so here Let's say that our function, our function here is to filter blood, helps to do that, filter blood. It helps in the immune response, immune response. So what that means is to, um, let's say get better. Or, uh, yeah, something like that. So get better or, you know, kill the sickness, something like that. Whatever you want to say to make you understand what immune response is. So responds to um, the alert from your body saying, womp, 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 we're sick, we're sick. And it sends all these white blood cells, the T cells, to recognize these things. And it tries to find these sicknesses, tag them. And then other cells come by and engulf them and kill them. It's, it's all dramatic. All right, and our organs here... Our lymph, L-Y-M, lymph vessels, that's those tubes I'm talking about. The vessels are the tubes, um, lymph vessels, lymph nodes. Um, what else am I leaving out here? All right, the spleen. So the spleen, is that an A? Oh my gosh, I forgot how to spell it for a second. Let's check. Boop. No, it's an E. All right. So our spleen, good there. So here we've got our lymph vessels, our lymph nodes, and our spleen. All right, now the last one here, which a lot of you probably don't want to talk about. You're like, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing, the reproductive system. But just calm down. Calm down, okay? So the reproductive system, our purpose here is uh, making babies. So here, um, it... This is the purpose in humans, especially, is for sexual reproduction. We'll talk about what sexual reproduction is and how that's different from asexual reproduction later on. But right now, we'll just say this is responsible for reproduction and producing hormones and pheromones. So right here, let's go ahead and get my webcam up again. Here, we're going to call this the reproductive system. R-E-P-R-O, repro productive reproductive system 
And here our function, our function of our reproductive system is to reproduce. That makes sense because it's the reproduction system. Reproduce, so make more copies. So let's say make more of whatever organism it is. So in our case, babies. And then the another function is to produce pheromones. Oh my goodness, I could not spell this for the life of me. I'm going to cheat. Ugh. So let's check it out, yo. Um, pheromones. P H E R O M O N E S. There we go. That was very helpful. So, yeah, pheromones and hormones. All right, so our organs here, our organs, a lot of people don't like to hear these organs. We're just gonna use a few. So we'll have the uterus, uterus, that's a female organ. That's what helps, uh, that's where the baby's housed. So that's our, our reproductive important housing unit for um, the baby. We're gonna say the ovaries. Ovaries are also a female organ. And again, you'll learn more about these in actual 8th grade health and 10th grade health. Um, the testes. Uh, I don't know how to spell that. Mm, testes. And those are housed inside the testicles. I'm sure that there is laughing in the room right now. I'm not there. I'm, I'm sad I'm missing this, honestly. Um, and then a lot of people hate saying this word. They feel really uncomfortable with this word. Um, so for my seventh graders, I allow my seventh graders to pronounce this wrong because for some reason you can pronounce it wrong and say it just fine. Um, this is called the penis. So if you want to call it the penis, you can go ahead and do that in this class. I'll be okay with that. But this is actually the penis. Um, but yeah, it's you can you can also call it the penis. All right. So for this diagram. Oh boy, would this be embarrassing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a big box around the genital area here. That's right, make yourself a nice, good square box there. And it's probably preferable if you get a nice big red, I know I've done red a lot for this video. So now that we've got this really uncomfortable, embarrassing, massive box over the crotch area, we're actually going to put a word there instead of drawing. This is what we're gonna write. Oh, I ran out of space, bad timing. All right, there we go, sensor. Did I spell that wrong? Did it start with an S? Okay, I think it's, maybe. I think it starts with an S. Just so you guys know, Mrs. Grether can't spell. My daughter's here, right? Right now, I can't spell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she knows, she's like, I can't spell worth crap. She'll ask me every once in a while and then she'll remember who she's asking and she won't, she won't. She'll be like, oh, never mind, you can't spell. All right, so here's our centered region. We're not gonna draw images of it. Don't worry, you have plenty of time. Oh, crap, it is an S. My daughter just corrected me. Oh, it's a C, it's a C, okay, good. It's a C, she said it's a C. Anyway, you'll have plenty of embarrassing time to talk with Mr. Shaw about that in your eighth grade um, um, health class and 10th grade health class. But for now, we're just gonna put a censored box there and um, leave that embarrassment for later in your life. Sorry, okay. All right, so that is all of our body systems. Um, whatever you guys don't finish, I will finish with you in class. I don't think you made it this far, but if you did, congrats for working so hard in class today.